So what determines the tone of the urinary bladder? It is determined by the volume of urine in the bladder and the pressure that is created because of it. So how can you measure this volume pressure relationship? By a technique that is called as cystometry. We insert a double lumen catheter into the bladder and we are putting 50 ml of water every time and recording the pressure with the help of the pressure transducer. So this relationship between the volume and the pressure is known as cystometrogram. So here we are plotting the intravesical pressure versus intravesical volume. So first the pressure that is in centimeters of water 0 centimeters 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and so on. The intravesical volume 50 ml of urine in the bladder, 100 ml urine, 200, 300, 400. So now we will study that what would happen when the urine volume in the bladder is 50 ml, then what is the pressure rise? So when the volume of urine in the bladder increases from 0 to 50, what is the pressure change? So at this time, when it rises from 0 to 50, this is the pressure change. So the pressure change is just 8 to 9 centimeters of water. So when the bladder volume increases from 0 to 50 ml, there is moderately steep increase in pressure from 0 to about 8 to 9 centimeters. Now what would happen when there is more volume of urine in the bladder? That means additional volume up to 300 ml. Then what would happen when this volume is increasing? So when it is 0 to 50, this is the curve that is obtained. This is known as 1A. And when there is additional volume in the bladder, this is the curve that is obtained. This curve is known as 1B. This is the plateau phase because of the flatness of the segment. So this is the phase when not much or minimal or no change is produced in the bladder. See this is remaining as 10 cm only even when the bladder volume has increased from 100 to 200 to 300 and so on. So that means during the 1B phase there is not much or minimal change in the pressure. This 1B is the plateau phase, the flat phase. It represents the relaxation of the bladder smooth muscle. And why this plateau phase is there? We'll discuss it. Now we come to the third phase. This is the third phase that is known as phase 2. So phase 1A, phase 1B and phase 2. This is the phase when the bladder has 400 ml of urine micturation reflex is triggered. So we said that at 150 ml the first urge to micturation is felt and at 400 ml the micturation reflex is triggered and the person must go to void. If he doesn't go to void this is the graph that is obtained. This is the pressure volume relationship, the curved dotted line that is obtained. If the person has 400 ml or plus urine in the bladder but he's not going to void, he's avoiding voiding. So this is the sense of discomfort that is being produced. So at this he must go and micturate otherwise it will be very painful. So what is this plateau phase? How this plateau phase is seen? So this plateau phase is because of the adaptability of the urinary bladder. And why it is adaptable? Like all the smooth muscles, detrusor has plasticity. Which means when detrusor is stretched because of urine, the tension is produced initially but it is not well maintained. That means the pressure rise is not that much even when the urine volume has increased. So it can accommodate a lot of urine inside without much change in pressure. So adaptability is because of the properties of smooth muscle, the property of plasticity of the smooth muscle and because of the Laplace law. Now what does this law say? Laplace law says that pressure in a spherical viscous is twice the wall tension divided by radius. So this is Laplace law. So this is wall tension in the bladder. So in case of bladder, when the tension T increases, as the bladder is filled with urine, so does the radius R increases. 
that means this pressure increase would be slight or minimal or no change until the organ is relatively filled means until 400 ml of urine is there in the bladder so this plateau phase is because of the adaptability because of the plasticity of the smooth muscle and because of the laplace law now what is the significance of doing cystometrogram or what are the conditions in which you do the cystometrogram so cystometrogram will tell you about the filling phase about the emptying phase of the bladder so you can use it to study the making the diagnosis of stress incontinence like leakage of the urine when occurs when the intra-abdominal pressure rises or urinary tract infection in multiple sclerosis patient when there are some urinary problem in stroke patients ureteric obstruction and detrusor instability spinal shock patients so we can use them in many cases wherever we suspect that some urinary pathology is there so this is a very important urodynamic study that has been used these days so thank you very much. Hope this video was really useful to you.